Hello friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. I have something in this box, craft related, that I have been dying to try since the very first time I've ever seen them. You ready for this? Have you ever heard of Scorch Marker? They sent me a box full of their supplies. I'm so excited to test it out. So for me, personally, I actually have three different laser cutters. So I'm able to burn into any type of wood or ceramic and engrave anything, right? But for the crafters that don't have laser cutters, there's not a very good option or that you thought that there wasn't a very good option. Supposedly, and I've seen all their ads, I've seen their videos, and I know it's true, you can take their marker and burn into wood. Yeah, so you don't necessarily need a laser engraver to burn into wood anymore, engrave into wood. We can just use this marker. They sent me a starter kit, but filled into this box is like a how-to. And then I got two pens. It looks like they're the same exact thing, but the cool thing about this pen is, is on one side there is a paintbrush and then on the other side, it's a like a chisel marker so we can write but then also paint in larger areas. So this is my thought process is they also in the starter kit come with like little uh, wood slices. So I'll show you the prep on, on that. And they also come with like these stencils, some flower stencils. So we can use that on here. But for me, the one thing that I love doing is personalizing cutting boards with recipes on them. This one right here, I took a photo of a recipe and it's, this is like not a good one. I wouldn't sell this one. This was like supposed to be in the trash pile, but the other side is going to be blank. So I'm going to do something on it today. But do you see how I just took a recipe and I engraved onto the cutting board? So that's kind of what I want to do in Father's Day is coming up. So I have a brand new unopened cutting board. I found a clip art off of Creative Fabrica that I'm gonna download, put into Design Space, and I'm gonna create my own stencil and we'll see how that works. So the other thing that comes into this box, oh look, I got some butterfly stencils too, how cute. Okay, so the other thing that comes in this box is a heat gun. If you have a heat gun for like your sublimation blanks, you know how like they zap it with a heat gun to like shrink the shrink wrap, or if you have an embossing tool, uh, to do like the embossing powders and you have like a heat gun or the other thing too is if you have like a handy dandy garage filled with tools if you have a heat gun that would like I would use it to take off paint from things um, or wallpaper if you have that that's this is the same thing but essentially all it is is exactly what the name is. It's a heat gun. It's going to get very, very hot. This thing says it gets up to, uh, whoa, 752 degrees. Wow, this thing is going to get hot. So you just need something to really burn the scorching, whatever, whatever's in here. Okay, so let's just experiment first with these like little wood slices, and then we'll go on to like cutting a stencil figuring all that out on the crickets and then um, see what we can come up with. I'm excited. I really am because like, if you don't have a laser cutter, and laser cutters are expensive, like they're expensive and they are a pain in the butt sometimes. <laughs> they, they are expensive equip pieces of equipment and then they're expensive to fix. Yeah, so I mean, if you don't want to buy a laser cutter just to engrave wood, could this be like a really good option? Anyway, so I have two, two markers. We're gonna experiment. Let's start out with the wood slices and then, yeah, we'll just get to uh, engraving our cutting board eventually. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug this bad boy in. Okay, so this one stands up if you put it on the back right here because of the stand. I like that. My other one does not have this feature, so that's pretty nice. Okay, the cool thing is, is it comes with instructions. Boop, boop. Okay, so very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to put on a stencil. This almost reminds me of like a tattoo paper. Let's see here. Oh yeah, it's like sticky, like vinyl maybe. 
Okay, I'm just gonna use my squeegee that I got from TechRap just to put this decal on there. The decal or the uh, stencil has this like white clear film over it, so I'll just peel that off. Okay, and then directions say just to draw, just to draw on it. All right, let's do this. So we'll use this one. Okay, the very first thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna prime that pencil or the marker. Do you see how like it's a amber color and then it's a darker amber color right here? So we're just bringing down whatever it is that's filled with this. Okay, there is the juice, I guess. And then all you have to do, oh, it comes on purple. That's pretty cool. Okay, so you can color on it just like you would any other coloring board. Let's do the marker portion or the paint paint portion. Or it has this like sponge thing. Okay, so far, I like that it comes on purple so then you know like what your stenciling what you're put where you're putting this stuff at um i did see in one of their frequently asked questions is if you get this scorch marker tool let's say we put this over here and we're just going to put some over there and we're going to test this out but in their frequently asked questions what was asked was is like if we get this scorch tool in places we don't want can we remove it? And what they said their answer was is that yes, all you'd have to do is take like a sanding block and sand away your um, the stuff you don't want. So we're gonna test that out. Anyway, we're gonna take this off. It says to take off your stencil and there is our butterfly. Then all you wanna do is turn on your heat gun. I'm gonna put my wood slice on my silicone mat, my working mat, because I'm not trying to melt my cutting, my uh, cutting board. I don't know if it will melt, but. Okay, my picture for the instructions say to, whoo, it's smoking. Do you see that smoke coming off of there? Yeah, it's smoking. Huh. Got a fire alarm. Okay, so at least we know that my fire alarm works. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was interesting. Uh, I had to go take my dog down back down to the house because he does not like the fire alarm. I mean, would you? Okay, and just for reference, I am in a very large room with my window open, so I don't know. All right, so let's try this again with no dog and this. Going off again. Okay, do you see how much smoke's coming off of the heat gun? Whew, hold on. Okay, I don't know if the heat gun is what's, that fire alarm. So I don't know if it's the heat gun that is making the fire alarm go off or is it the, like this burning, but like you can see it's not all the way done right here. Um, I think I'm just going to, put this outside and do this, burn it outside. But you can see that there is, you know, I messed up here, right? That was the intention. Okay, so I have a fine grit sanding paper and I'm just going to kind of sand off my mess up. Okay, <laughs> uh, I put a, like my little Dremel sanding tool together and my heat gun is hanging out my window, my craft room window <laughs> right now. And you should see the amount of smoke that's coming out the back of that thing. It is smoking hard. Okay, so for my first try, it doesn't look terrible. I mean, I just rubbed it and, and now that looks bad. But if I were to continue sanding, I probably would be able to get rid of my mess up. Uh, I would say that that was not a success though. Okay, so why don't we try this? Instead of doing another stencil, let's, whoop, okay. I'm just do my initials. Okay, I have another heat blower from PYD. It's the same concept, remember, as the first one. Uh, this one you can have like settings like high low temperature settings and then it essentially looks exactly the same Okay, so I'm going to try this one to see what uh, You know Okay, so no smoke alarm 
None. I think it was the heat gun, but here we go. So this is completely done. There is no purple. Now the back of this is very hot, so you have to be careful. I'm glad I started to use my silicone mat so I didn't burn or melt my cutting mat, but like that looks good, right? Okay, so now that we've figured that out, let's head over to the computer and make a stencil for my cutting board, this cutting board. Okay, first I wanna show you the bundle that I got off Creative Fabrica. Um, it is $4.99 a month. If you've never signed up for it, you get 10 free downloads. So if you wanted to make this one of your downloads, look at how many uh, designs that you get. And all you have to do once you sign up for your account is you just press this download button. I'll link this in the description of this video if you wanted to grab it. But then what you need to do is we're gonna go into design space and we are going to go over to these hamburger lines and we're gonna do canvas. We're gonna open up a blank window in design space. Okay, let's go into uploads and then upload image. Okay, now what we need to do is find our download for the Father's Day. And I'm gonna drop in any one that I want. Let's do, I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna drop it in. Okay, and then I'm gonna just do simple. The reason why I'm only gonna do simple is because it is just black and the background's already removed. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press simple and then just press continue. Because the background's already removed and you can see like that purplish blue, what color is that? Like purple blue color? Because we've already, we already can see that, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is and I'm gonna press apply. When you go over here, do you see how you can see the checkerboard? That's exactly what you want. If you have like a full box thing, like a gray box, then you're gonna wanna go back and edit your image. But for this particular image, we didn't have to do any edits. I want it to be a cut image. I'm gonna keep it as uh, the dad's grill master name, and then I'm gonna press upload. Okay, you can see I already have one already downloaded, so I'm just gonna come over here, find the one we just uploaded, and we're gonna add it into Canvas. Whew, and it was large and in charge, so we're gonna just make this smaller. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is grab your wood piece that you're using and then a fabric measuring tape. A regular ruler will work too. I just love fabric measuring tapes. They are so handy. And you are going to measure off how big your blank is. That being said, these ones I get online, but uh, the Dollar Tree sells cutting boards, like bamboo cutting boards. This one's a real wood board, but Dollar Tree sells bamboo cutting boards for $1.25. So if you wanna experiment with that, that's a good option too. But these ones are all wood. Okay, and I am just going to take measurements. So we got five inches by eight inches. So the, what you're going to do is, is we're gonna insert a shape and we're going to insert a square. Okay, I am going to change this over. We want to make sure that it's whatever way your cutting board, if you want your decal to lay this way, then your five inches wide is going to stay on the wide. But if you're going to want it to be like this, this eight inches needs to be on the wide side. Does that make any sense? So you just want to make sure that we're going to lay out this square the way you want your decal to look like. So for me, it is five by eight. So I'm just going to resize this if making sure that this little lock right here is unlocked for this portion. And then when we're done, we're just going to just press enter. Okay, we're gonna drag this over here and we're gonna arrange this to the back. Okay, then with our decal that we are going to work on, I'm just gonna drag this over. And if it fits inside of my rectangle that I've created, in theory, if you've measured your blank correctly, it's going to fit inside this, inside this cutting board, right? So measuring is key. Measure twice, cut once, kind of that same aspect with this. You just wanna make sure that you measured your blank correctly. And then we're just going to resize this down to whatever it is that you, that will, you think will look good in your uh, cutting board. Okay, I don't need to center this. This isn't like one of those projects that you would have to center. However, did you notice that with stencils, do you see how everything is cut out? But generally when we're doing like wall decals or car decals, we want the dad's grill master to look like that, right? But we are not going to be placing anything on. We want to trace the inside of it and then burn it. This is gonna be so hard to explain. I hope I explained that to you and I did not lose you. Okay, so we are gonna create the stencil. We want the stencil to look like this. 
So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna now take this box. I know that what I've created inside of this box is going to fit on my cutting board. I'm just gonna delete this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this box. I'm just gonna go smaller and I'm gonna go pretty tight to my design, just like this, right? Okay, when we have that done, I am just gonna select everything. I'm gonna right click and I press slice. We are gonna delete this now because we don't need it. And there's one more left over, we're gonna delete that. So this right here is our stencil. This is, this is what we need to cut. Now I'm going to use vinyl for this, sticker vinyl, the sticky stuff, not the HTV stuff. If you're doing with HTV, then you're gonna wanna flip this. But because it's a sticker, we don't need to flip it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this and then we're gonna cut it out in vinyl. So we are just gonna cut this out on vinyl. I don't have any sticker material vinyl. I just have regular plain old adhesive vinyl from TechRap. That's what I'm gonna use for this. Um, I, and I'm experimenting. I have no idea if this is gonna work out or not. So we shall see if that's like the correct thing or should I have gotten stencil vinyl? I don't know. So let, let me cut this out and then I'll show you the rest of the steps I'm gonna do. All right, so here is my decal right here. I'm just going to cut this out. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weed the very out portion of this. Okay, then going back in, we are not going to weed the back, the big box that we created. We're gonna weed the actual letters, leaving the insides of it. Remember, we want our stencil to look something like this. Do you know how much I love vinyl? I don't, I don't love vinyl at all. I'm going to just get rid of these small little pieces because I just lost a whole bunch of little ones. You know, to be honest with you, vinyl and me are not friends. We don't get along very <laughs> well. Okay, so now that we have it all weeded out, the insides weeded out, we just need to take a little bit of transfer paper. Okay, when we have our transfer paper cut out the size that we need it, all you need to do is peel off your transfer tape. This is the sticky part, that's what you want. Now we're gonna lay this on top of our vinyl decal and we're gonna burnish it, making sure that it gets nice and good and stuck on our transfer tape. Okay, now what you wanna do is flip this over and we wanna take this white stuff off. Everything that is your sticker or your vinyl decal needs to be stuck to your transfer tape. Okay, you see how nothing is left on here? That's exactly what you want. If there's something left on here, that means that your entire decal did not transfer onto this and so you're gonna be missing pieces. Okay, now what you want to do is making sure that this is going to be center and on your board just the way you want it. I feel like this looks really good. <laughs> if it doesn't, I'm not going to measure, um, but if it doesn't, just don't, just don't tell me. <laughs> just, ignore, just ignore my mess up. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub this on really well onto my blank. And now what you want to do is take that transfer sheet, the checkered transfer sheet, you want to take it off. Okay, so if you were to be painting this, is these are the same steps. So if you're gonna be doing like a large painted sign, same steps I just did for this is what you would need to do for that. Looks like it's good and stuck on there. All right, so for this one, I think I'm just going to use the brush to like get it done really fast. Alrighty, looks like it's all filled in. Okay, so I am going to now take this off the decal off. Oh no. Do you see it's bled? It's bled a little bit. Hmm. Oh geez. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's try this. I'm, I'm pretty positive that it is uh, not going to turn out well because you see like how it's all like bled. Yeah. Okay. Let's just do it anyways. Let's do this. Okay. I don't think we need to go any further. <laughs> Do you see that? Okay, that's not working. So let's flip this over. Cause you know, we had like really good success with it just being the marker. So why don't I just write something? And I have terrible handwriting, so don't judge the handwriting if you think my handwriting's terrible cause it truly is really bad. Okay, so even with just doing the marker, you could see that there is a little bit of bleeding. Do you see that? How it's just bleeding just a little bit. But then when like I didn't have a whole lot of ink, there's like no bleeding. I wonder if that's going to show up versus it being super dark. I don't know, let's test it. 
Okay, so definitely what I suggest is the least amount of ink possible. Do you see that? This looks amazing. This does not, but this was like heavy inked, right? Because I had just primed it, but like this, this is good. Okay, so since I've now ruined this, let's do this again. And I'm not going to prime the pen. Okay, so do you see how faint that is? And I think this is exactly what we're looking for. Something that doesn't have a whole lot of ink because when you have this, there is like very minimal. All right, and there we go. I probably could go a little bit darker because it's still a little purple, but it is getting warm in here. But look at that. Okay, so final review of this marker is the least amount of ink, the better. However, if you do really like a lot of ink, do you see how dark that gets? Like that's almost like black. It's like a really, really dark brown. Um, so there's that. However, when you're working with something like wood, like a wood cutting board or something like that, definitely I think the least amount of ink possible probably be the best route to go. All right, y'all, what do you think? Do you think that this is a cool little tool or what? What, what is our opinion? Oh, you know what? The last thing I wanna do is I have these like mini uh, rolling pins. Let's see what we can do with that. So let's go, let's just do this. Okay, I put Mama's Bakery on there. These I got at like Home Goods for cheap. I think it was like a set of two for like $5. Okay, now this is really cool because like even if you were to splurge and get a Glowforge laser cutter, it still doesn't have a rotary tool. So you wouldn't be able to engrave this even if you did have a Glowforge laser cutter. So like that's really cool that I was just able to just pen scratch on there on like a, a round surface. Look at that. How stinking cute is that? This is really cool. Look at that. Okay. How cute, I love it. All right, y'all, put in the comments what you think about this Scorch pen. Are you a yay or a nay? All right, y'all, I sure hope I inspired you to create and I will see you later.